This is our second video introduction to raptors who winter on the Mendocino coast. This one is about the falconids. We have three regular species of falcons, one rare one, and another bird that is falcon shaped but isn't actually a falcon. We'll start with the smallest and most abundant of the falcons on the Mendocino coast. This is of course the American kestrel. Frequently seen perched on wires like that bird on the left. What we have here is a male on the left and a female on the right, and they're pretty easy to tell apart. Not only is the female substantially larger than the male, but the males have blue wings and a bluish gray top to the head. You can just see that on the bird on the left. The, whereas the females are mostly this rich brown color on the back, and that extends up over the top of their head as well. They're the only small falcon with that rich brown back. We'll get into the other falcons later, but they are uh, either gray or dark blue, and uh, only the American kestrel has that rich brown back. So right away, you can use that to identify them. Also, before we leave this slide, first thing you gotta check on all these raptors is uh, how long are the wings? What are the, where do the wings go when they're perched like this? And you know right away these are falcons because their wingtips extend all the way out to the tail tip. Well, here's a female in flight. Again, that rich brown back and the face pattern is also characteristic of falcons in general. They often have these two dark streaks on their face, but uh, kestrels can be identified because they have a very bold, very prominent dark streak that runs down from the eye. Uh, almost like a tear track and then they have another one behind the eye that extends down behind their cheek. The females also have a long tail that's frequently, as in this case, uh, kind of a rich almost rusty brown color. And this one's carrying some grass with it. They frequently do that when they make a strike at something in the field. They'll grab up whatever they can and take off with it and sort it out later. Here's a pair of kestrels, beautiful shot. Uh, not much else to say other than I just wanted to throw it in because it's such a great photo. You don't often get to see them like this. All right, here's another small falcon, considerably less common. In fact, these are only winter visitors. The kestrel, uh, there's a few of them that actually breed here, but a lot of them come in in the winter time. These guys only show up here on the Mendocino coast in winter. They breed far to the north. These are the Merlins. They are a little bit larger than kestrels. You don't generally get to notice that because you don't see them side by side. We have two different birds here. On the left is a paler version. Uh, the Merlins that we get here on the coast almost always have these streaked chests, which again sets them apart from the kestrel. Notice the face pattern, not nearly as striking as kestrels. In fact, on a lot of merlins, you can hardly see any markings at all, like that bird on the left. The one on the right is a darker bird, a little more typical, I would say, of the merlins we get here on the coast. Again, long wings, long tail, and that falcon profile, uh, slender, and they tend to sit upright, a different kind of posture than Budios have. Merlins, of course, are uh, great uh, hunters. They eat a lot of dragonflies. They catch them on the wing and frequently eat them on the wing. And they also are bird predators. They will pursue and catch birds in the air. And in the wintertime, you often see them chasing birds around the countryside. They go very, very fast. Here, just for comparison, is a side-by-side. -side. Kestrel on the left, Merlin on the right, and again, what I was saying earlier, that kestrel with that distinctive rich brownish back and Merlin more of a gray, uh, the Merlin often almost looks black out in the field sometimes. And I, like I said, they fly really fast. Normally, you uh, the, the Merlin is a what was that bird. In other words, it goes by you so quickly, you don't get a chance to really see any field marks your clue that it was a Merlin is a general sense that it was a falcon and it was going so fast you couldn't hardly focus on it. Somehow or another, Roger managed to catch this one in flight. 
a couple of beautiful sh flight shots of what's called a black Merlin, which is one of the races of Merlin that comes down here from the tundra in the wintertime. All right, here's the third falcon that's fairly common on the coast. These are year-round residents, although there is also a migratory population that comes in in the wintertime. These, of course, are peregrine falcons, a great conservation success story. Back in the 1970s, they were on their, thought to be on their way to extinction, uh, and then the ban of DDT and various other conservation measures uh, helped them recover, and their population now is doing quite well. So this is a pair, of course, and uh, you can see the size difference, the female on the right and the male on the left, and that prominent hooded head. They uh, almost look like they have an executioner's hood, except they have a white throat. But they have a real dark head, a gigantic eye, and those big dark sideburns that extend down below their cheeks. Their backs are dark bluish gray, and on the adults like these, they have that heavy barring on the chest. That's pretty variable though. There are races of peregrines that have very pale chests. Here's a young one in flight, an immature bird with that streaked chest, and the immature birds are brown instead of blue-gray. But again, notice the face pattern, uh, those big sideburns extending down from the eye. Different from the kestrel, and you'd never mistake a peregrine for a kestrel, I don't think. Uh, for one thing, they are much larger, much stronger flyers. Pe uh, kestrels get blown around by the wind, and peregrines pretty much master the wind. Here's a look at one on the back, and very distinctive color, that slate blue-gray, and the big eye, and those big sideburns. Notice the wings. Peregrines have somewhat heavier-looking wings than most falcons. They're long and pointed, but they're also a little broader and deeper than most falconids. And you frequently see them actually on the ground. Uh, Often out in the Central Valley, you'll find one down on the ground because they've just killed a duck. They are great hunters of waterfowl and shorebirds. Well, here's the rare falcon. Uh, we get very, very rarely do we find these on the Mendocino coast. It's always exciting to see one here, but every now and then one shows up down on the plains between Elk and Manchester. This is the prairie falcon, and they are similar to peregrines, but they're a little smaller and they're a kind of a sandy brown color. They never have that blue-gray color of peregrines. This one, uh, streaked chest, a young bird. Great shot. This is what they look like from the back, a kind of a pale sandy brown color. And their head is usually a little bit mottled with brown and white. And here in flight, they, if you get to see one soar overhead, look at the armpits those black axillaries. That is the key field mark for a, a prairie falcon. So when you see a medium-sized or large falcon flying overhead and you're not sure if you're looking at a prairie or a peregrine, if it has those dark armpits, it's a prairie falcon. Okay, this is not actually a falcon, but they're falcon shaped, so I thought I'd include them in this particular tutorial. This is the white-tailed kite frequently seen as here perched on bushes or very often perched on fence posts and hovering. Here you can see they have the falcon shape and they're, uh, they were previously called black-shouldered kites. Now they're known as white-tailed kites. And you'll see in another slide why they were used to be called black-shouldered. But this is how you often see them as high up overhead. Doing this, hovering kiting, in fact. They hover motionless in the air. Their head will be absolutely still while they're flapping like crazy. And they're staring at the ground looking for meadow mice. It's almost all they eat. About 90% of their diet is voles. And here is a great series of shots from Roger of one actually succeeding. So here's the, the hovering. Here it's beginning its plunge. <laughs> Can't believe this one. Caught it just going into the grass. You can see its head. It's going in head first, but at the last instant, it will 
rotate around its wings and send those feet down and grab its prey. And here it is coming back at you with a vole in its feet. See those black shoulders? That's the white-tailed kite. There you go, a quick introduction to the falcons. Relatively easy raptors to identify. Always an exciting sight to see them flying around and hunting. Even the kestrels are really fun to watch. Happy birding!